Ladies and gentlemen, I am said Alpha, and it should come as no surprise to anyone that Disney has issued a cease and desist against Poem Studios over their full conversion mod for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic named Aperon. This full conversion mod was set to update one of the most, at least for me, beloved Star Wars games in existence and bring it into the Unreal 4 engine, and while I did spout off on Twitter a bit regarding this, I did want to at least take a moment to discuss the particulars, and also I thought it might be worthwhile to talk about the concept of copyright when it comes to video game mods in general, using a Paron as an example. I will of course go through the particulars of this situation first before we launch into the larger discussion. As always, links to any sources used along with links to my social media, Discord, and Patreon are in the description down below. Also, as a new announcement, I will soon be posting a once-monthly video for my Patreon subscribers. Sometimes it may be a simple Q&A, other times it may be a spoken word rendition of a song, and sometime in the near future it may even be me redoing the Epic Sarge rant from the A Slap on Titan YouTube parody series. If that sounds like fun, Fun, then head on over to patreon.com slash setalpha. Even as little as $1 per month will grant you access to all of that. So here are the particulars. A Poem Studios announced via Twitter yesterday the cease and desist letter sent to them by Disney in which they required them to, well, cease and desist their development of the Aperon conversion mod. Now, in that, they referred to Poem Studios' work as a game, which seems to imply that this was a standalone project and not the full conversion mod that the project actually was. The conversion mod, in fact, did require the ownership and installation of the 2003 RPG game Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic to be able to play. And while the mod that has been three years in the making, with at least another year due in development, has been cancelled, it's been reported that the team of nine volunteer developers that comprise Poem Studio will continue to work on another project that they've codenamed Novella, and that this will be an all-original work. And those really are all the particulars and facts involved here. Pretty cut and dry. But for me, there are a couple of things that made me sit back and think a bit. You see, the way Disney phrased this was as a game, not the mod that it was. So it makes me wonder if Disney was even aware of what it was they were slapping down. Of course, it's highly likely that they probably flat out wouldn't even care. Now, I've seen some people on Twitter defending Disney's actions here from the standpoint of it's a remake, not a mod, which was not the case. It is what is known as a full conversion mod, which still requires the skeleton, the core framework of the original games that were in order to be able to play. And while Disney does own the Star Wars IP, and make no mistake, they are fully within their legal rights, even obligation to defend their IP, it still raises the question in regards to whether or not any video game mod can be considered legal for from a fair use standpoint. One viewer pointed out, in arguing against my stating something incorrectly on Twitter, a site that I have visited several times in the past, which I think is extremely pertinent here, which is Stanford University's Measuring Fair Use, The Four Factors. These are the four basic principles that have to be considered when determining fair use, which, due to the nature of copyright law, has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Those factors are the purpose and character of your work, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion taken, and the effect of the use upon the potential market. And every mod out there will be able to check off one or more of these considerations, but especially with full conversion mods, it gets a little more difficult. And let's run through the considerations and why. The first consideration, the factor or potential transformative nature of the work. Now, in this document, they list the following two questions. Has the material you have taken from the original work been transformed by adding new expression or meaning, and was value added to the original by creating new information, new aesthetics, new insights, and understandings? One could say that a total conversion mod is completely transformative in this regard as it applies an entirely new aesthetic to the product in question, in this case, namely Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It takes the entire game and gives it a whole new look and a new feel, and I would say that would certainly qualify as a new aesthetic. Then we also have the nature of the copyrighted work. Now, KOTOR is a work of fiction, which makes determining fair use more difficult in these cases. If it were a non-fiction work, that would legally be easier. The next question would be the amount and substantiality of the portion taken. Now with this, the rule is very much less is more, where fair use of a copyrighted work should be as little as necessary, such as a few seconds of a song, a paragraph of a book, or clips from a movie. Nothing that would give away the entire plot or otherwise be able to supplant or replace the original work. 
And in this case, Eperon would fail that measurement. Granted, it is a full conversion mod, so the as little as necessary would be well, the entire game pretty much, at least the aesthetics at any rate. But regardless, when it comes to such a massive scope, that particular aspect of fair use would be a pretty hard pill for a judge to swallow. Then lastly, there is the effect on the potential market. Now this is determined as, in this case, if Eperon would deprive Disney of income or undermine a new or potential market. And in this case, Eperon would both succeed and fail. And the reason for it being able to succeed that argument would be because Eperon requires you to own KOTOR to be able to run the conversion mod. If anything, this could be used to draw additional focus to the original game and could cause an increase in sales. However, also one could easily see how popular this mod would be, and in the midst of the god-awful garbage games Electronic Arts have been shoving out their doors in order to fill their coffers coupled with the mind-numbingly stupid and poorly written sequel movies from Disney's Kathleen Kennedy, there is no small wonder that an extremely large percentage of the fan base would clamor at the chance to be able to play one of, if not the best Star Wars games ever made on an updated graphics engine. Hell, I know I've been borderline drooling at the prospect myself. But when we take all of these considerations into account, it could really go either way when it comes right down to it, and a judge, of course, would have to make any final determination. And when that is the case, Poem Studios seemed very accepting of Disney's requirements, and it's not surprising really that anyone would not wish to fuck with a house of mouse when it comes to copyright litigation. Disney would simply out-resource them and claim a victory by default, and that would cause trouble for the modding community long term. And it's worth noting here that modding is a very accepted practice within the gaming industry to the point that within some areas and aspects, it's all but expected. And to their credit, most games developers and publishers have in the past not only tolerated modding, but have actively made them part of their communities in order to promote long-term retention of players. It keeps the game, and by extension the developers, in the hearts and minds of the gamers, and it costs them literally nothing to do so. We can and probably will most likely see a radical shift in that perception with games publishers as they transition more and more to live services, a platform and monetization method that will, if anything, be actively hindered by the modding community that provides their fan-made content completely free. And as that is the case, we can already see where the House of Mouse stands when it comes to these topics. Modders not welcome, modding not welcome, buy our new games instead and give us money. But as always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.